So the name of the study is Developing a New Methodology for Analyzing Potential Displacement. Uh, and the focus of the study is trying to better understand how investments in transit and transit neighborhoods um, is related to gentrification and displacement and how that might in turn affect car usage and vehicle miles traveled. We talk about gentrification in terms of um, disadvantaged neighborhoods um, that uh, see an increase in investments, but usually in real estate investment, um, as well as an influx of newcomers that are often higher income um, and higher, higher educated. So the motivation for the study came directly out of SB 375 and the sustainable community strategies and this idea that we need to invest in transit neighborhoods and increase um, density in those neighborhoods and improve those neighborhoods so people want to live close to transit and stop using their cars. And the concern that investment in those neighborhoods, which tend to be historically disadvantaged communities and communities of color, um, may result in displacement of those communities um, and that there might be this unintended consequence from, from SB 375 that um, disadvantaged communities get displaced from their neighborhoods that are seeing increased investment and improvements um, and that that might in turn result in impacts on greenhouse gas emissions. Our study is different from others in that we made a very careful distinction between gentrification and displacement and we looked at both. And then we used not just secondary data, but we also used case studies and in-depth interviews working with communities to validate the data themselves. California is a leader in climate change legislation and it has invested much of the last two decades in perfecting um, its, its legislation to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. What's really interesting is that it hadn't really addressed the impacts on people of these sustainability strategies. And so the, the biggest surprise to us in starting this study was that nobody had done it before and that we hadn't looked at the potential that as we densify our core areas of our major urban regions, land prices could go up and this would force out the existing residents. That's what we tried to analyze and understand how to mitigate. We learned a couple things in the course of the study. I think the most important thing we learned is that we don't really understand displacement fully yet. And I think we're going to have to do a much deeper uh, uh, analysis of how displacement takes place in particular communities. Because as we found out, a place like Concord is very different from the Mission District or Boyle Heights. And so the results are going to be different um, all over California and within regions uh, between communities. The second thing that we really took away from this study was the importance of a participatory process. So working with the Air Resources Board, we uh, had uh, intensive engagement with um, experts, uh, other community stakeholders, government agencies, regional agencies, um, nonprofits, um, community residents, and so forth. And that helped everybody get a, a, have a buy-in. Everybody involved in the study uh, gained some ownership of it, and there's sort of a creation of a shared meaning around what, what we mean when we talk about transit investment and displacement. So moving forward, we'd like to see that kind of momentum in, in, a, in terms of a collective thinking about how we can deal with climate change and displacement. Um, we'd like to see that move forward, get translated um, into legislation in Sacramento, and, um, and action at the local level.